Sisters and brothers, a very hearty welcome to each one of you to the 15th Sunday of the liturgical year in the ordinary time. Today, we are presented with three very important and very interesting readings. The first reading taken from the prophet Isaiah, the second reading from the letter to the Romans, and the gospel from the gospel of Matthew. Having read these three particular readings and assessed them, I come to a completion with a statement that would be very apt for these readings. I would title it as character, the fertile soil. Character, the fertile soil. I remind myself of an experience that I made with a retired school teacher in Germany. As I was a student, I used to visit this schoolmaster very often in order to learn the German language. This contact with him became a wonderful relationship in the course of time. Once during our en encounter with each other, he shared with me a classroom experience that he had during his teaching career. One day after his class, it was the time for the class test. So he gathered the students in the classroom, gave them the question and told them they have to complete the examination within one hour time. And having said that, he went out of the classroom. After one hour, he came back and collected all the answer sheets. He took these answer sheets with him home. At home, as he was evaluating these answer sheets, he found something very strange. Twelve of them had same answers. Same mistakes and same correct responses. What do we normally call it? We call it as copying. But this school teacher did not say anything about it to the students. Instead, he gave them the mark that they deserved. But the following day, as he came to the classroom, he distributed the answer sheets to the students. Then he went and closed the door of the classroom. Thereafter, he went to the blackboard and wrote 21 words there. And it ran like this. The measure of a man's character is what he would do if he knew that he would never be found out. The measure of a man's character is what he would do if he knew that he would never be found out. He narrated to me, within a short time, all these 12 students came to him, apologizing for the mistake they did. Character is the fertile soil. My sisters and brothers, today when I read the gospel passage, this exactly is the feeling that went through my mind and my heart. Character is the fertile soil. Through the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13, verses 1 to 23, a long passage, we are narrated with that beautiful story of the sower and the seed. Jesus speaks to us in a parabolic manner, explaining to us the importance of the values of the kingdom. There is this incident about the seeds that fell on the roadside, the seeds that fell on the rock, the seeds that fell in the thistle or in the bush, and finally, the seeds that fell on the right fertile soil, producing 30-fold, 60-fold, and 100-fold. What we would notice here is the attitude of God. It is said that the sower was very happy when he got these 30, 
60 and 100 fold from the seeds that fell on the right and fertile soil. He was absolutely not at all worried about those seeds that fell at the roadside, on the rock, or in the midst of the thistle. As I mentioned, this is the right attitude of God. God is the one who sows these seeds in our hearts. And it's our response whether we want to take it or to reject it. Yes, Jesus foresaw all that would happen with his disciples in the course of time after his passion, death and resurrection. Therefore, he instructed them so that they be prepared to encounter life situations whatever way they come to them. Some of them, after the death and resurrection of Jesus, felt the physical absence of Jesus in their lives. As a result, they became very dissipated, disappointed and sad. They did not want to go again forward with that commitment that they had when the Lord was with them. Some of them were afraid of the martyrdom they had to face. Some others were afraid of the persecutions and gave up their faith. But still, a few took it as a courageous stand in order to follow the Lord. And they are those who have spread the gospel message throughout the world without any stop. We enjoy the fruits and merits of the hard work of these people in our own lives, engendering the faith in our lives. Yes, my sisters and brothers, I'm always enchanted to see what these three different situations are before the seed fell on the right soil. Yes, it is said, when the sower was sowing the seed, first it fell at the roadside. What does it symbolize? It means very clearly that people who have lost the focus of their life will never be able to produce the best. Think about a little girl going together with her dad to the market. Their focus is the market. As they are going, the girl sees a man sitting at the roadside and selling the candy. She was enchanted by it. As a result, her whole attention about the market was now lost. She is focused on the candy alone. The immediate satisfaction that she can receive in her life. So it is with many of us. Most of us have a focus in the beginning. But in the course of time, very many of us lose track and are satisfied with the minimum, the immediacy of our life. Is it not correct regarding our lives? Whether it is regarding a profession, whether it is regarding a way of life, even about our choices that we make in our lives, are we satisfied with mere candies or are we focused on the final goal? Secondly, we see the seeds that fell on the rock. What do they symbolize? It's all about the impulses that we encounter in life. Think about a relationship. In the beginning part of any relationship, we enjoy it at the maximum. We are enchanted by the presence of the other. What makes us to get attracted to these persons or to our friend is that we are so happy to see them so beautiful. Sometimes we say, I love you because you are so enterprising, so handsome, so capable, so beautiful. Yes, we are attracted by the impulses of life time and again. Suppose if the beauty is no more there, if the person with whom we are in relationship is no more handsome and capable, will we continue to remain constantly in that relationship? Or are we affected by the impulses that are guiding us? Thirdly, we see the seeds that fell in the midst of the thistles. What are they? It symbolizes the daily sufferings of our life. Very often, 
we hear people saying, Why should I go to the church? God is no more worried about me. God does not show me any compassion and understanding. My father died of cancer. Or my siblings are quarreling with each other about their property. Very often, I am affected by sicknesses. Where is God? Yes, sufferings and difficulties of our life choke us. And we feel God is not there. Our faith becomes so small. Yes, my sisters and brothers, it is in this context that we need to once again get back to our final commitment. The immediacy of life is not the concern that is being produced or provided before us by Jesus. The Lord says, we are here to look for a final goal. That's why we have the first reading today from the prophet Isaiah, beautifully narrating before us, saying, the earth produces its fruit from those snow and the water that comes from heaven. The Lord gives everything to us and he does not take them back, permitting it to produce the best. So also the word of God which comes from heaven will never go back to heaven without its impact being made on the face of the earth. Yes, fruit that comes from experience can never be destroyed. We who have heard the word and understood its meaning should produce the best out of it. Life is the call today. St. Paul in his letter to the Romans today, through the second reading, would instruct us, the whole creation is groaning with birth pain. We have to produce the fruit of it. And once the fruit is produced, the effect is given. The joy is measureless. And Jesus compares this life with that seed. Yes, my brothers and sisters, we need to go beyond the short-term thinking. The invitation for us today is to look at the focus of our life. How about our life? Are we people who find meaning in life? Or are we affected by the thistles, the rocky grounds, and the roadsides of our lives? Let's go beyond produce the best in us so that God would take charge of our life. The measure of a man's character is what he would do if he knew that he would never be found out. Amen.